you're looking at the first two-story 3D printed house in Europe. My name is Jared Gross and today we have the unique opportunity of taking a tour with the architect who designed it himself and also getting a look at what they're using the printer for now at their facility. Without any further ado, let's hear from Pete. My name is Pete, I work uh, on Camp C. We have printed the first building in Europe with two storage. We printed it in cooperation with Cobalt, who built the first uh, printer. And it were students of a college in, in, in near who, built it, uh, who printed the building in, in about uh, 15 days. So we have printed the building. The whole structure is printed inside. For the facade on the exterior, we have one facade who is printed and another who is plastered. Both facades are isolated. So there is a difference between the right side and the left side. Um, we have printed one side who is curved. Huh? On the exterior, we have printed also the curved walls. The other side who is right, right wall, is insulated with another material and plastered. So we want to show that it's possible to print a um, typical house, a typical modern house in Belgium, same big, same size, but printed in one time. So here you can see the details of the, uh, the boat walls. So one wall is printed at the interior and the exterior and insulated with EPS curls. The other side with plastered uh, facade is printed inside with a structure printed and insulated and plastered at the exterior. Here you can see the other side of the building. One is the curved wall. So uh, we tried to, to show the possibilities of printing, of the printing technique. So as an architect, you are free to do what you want. We don't have to construct uh, the coverage. Uh, so the printing gives us the possibility to, to make what we want. With this printer of Cobot, it was only possible uh, until now to print only uh, vertical uh, walls. At the other side, we tried to, to make a little experiment and inclinate the wall for seven degrees. So the interior of the, the wall is printed and is inclinated for seven degrees. So that was possible. The curved uh, part of the building is one, uh, one part on, on two storage, huh? so there are no rooms in it, it's the entrance of the building. The other side there are two um, rooms inside, so we can use them for a uh, bureau to live, uh, everything is possible. So this is the south facade of the building, um, it's an, an, a new technique of solar panels. Huh? The, they printed a photograph of the printer um, on the panels itself. So these, these panels gives us all the energy for the building, so it's energy neutral. So here you can see the, the printer built by Cobalt uh, in, a, in a little composition. <laughs> for Cobalt it's very little I think. Um, and it's, it's to experiment now for the students uh, of Thomas More who make little things, little compositions, they experiment with materials, uh, now it's cement, but we're going to use all materials also, recycled um, uh, cement, recycled uh, concrete, um, and they made also varieties on, on the layer composition. Does it take less time to set up when it's smaller? I think two or three hours. Wow. It's the same time as the construction crane. So mm -hmm. It's very the, the system is very modern, right? It's, it's our uh, pieces of two meter forty, I think. So now the printer is wor working uh, completely automatic. Yeah, there's no one who, who has to be inside the printing area and everything happens uh, on, on the PC, on the computer, uh, without anyone who's helping uh, the printer. We made a system for the polis and there is a, a great silo outside uh, with, with the concrete inside. So also that works completely automatic. It follows the printing system. With this, this system now, in, in, this, in this composition, we don't need anyone who's, who's uh, working on the construction itself. Huh? It works completely automatic, so we can build in this composition buildings completely without anyone who is helping on the place itself. Everything happens 
after a computer, after a screen, and for the rest it works completely automatic. What are the other benefits of printing in this closed area versus outside? So here it's a student project, so they're working in a closed area. Um, in Belgium we have snow, we have rain, we have wind, so it will be necessary to find something. In Germany they build a, a greater building now, it was in, in a tent construction. So it's needed uh, because of the, the climate. We printed last year also in winter time when it was uh, zero degree. We printed in summer time when, when it was 40 degree. With these little constrictions around the printer, we can solve these problems and, and rain problems. But it's possible to do it without it. When everything works quickly, when everything is on, on, on point for working normally, it will be possible to, to construct in, in an open area. So this is the, the mixing system of the printer. We work uh, with concrete from Weber, Saint Gobain company. Yes, it works also completely automatic. You have the silo, you have the pump. Uh, you have the mixture with, with the water, everything is inside and everything happens after the screen, after the, the computer. For the building we, we use two of these, uh, of these silos. Students make some experiments with, 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 with the printing layers and the reinforcement of the concrete. So here they built, uh, we had last year uh, a concours of, of students uh, who make some models, some printing models, and now they experiment with um, these little things to find out solutions on that. When I explain to people how simple the technique is, I always say that I have a son of, of 13, 14 years old who, who takes his little tablet draw with his finger uh, little drawings and send it to a little printer and he explained to me how to use the little printer so it's a it's it's very simple technique there is no great difficulty on it uh, to work with it when you know a little bit of, of information what made you become an architect <laughs> what a question i was visiting india when i was 12 with my father and I saw all the slums and the poor people and that moment I thought, I was 12 years, I thought I want to find a solution for all those, those uh, poor things and that was the moment that I think I want to be an architect, I want to find solutions for how to live people around the world, to, to find some cheap methods for construction, to find possibilities for building houses for all the people who need it. So I was 12 years old when I made my choice to become an architect. <laughs> Have you found anything that fits that description? I think I found it the way to now. So we have made the project of the 3D printing. It's, it's the first start to find solutions to make a fast way or a quickly way construct uh, buildings, construct houses. I think we are on the right way with these possibilities. It's not the only possibility, there are others too, uh, but with the construction printing maybe we'll find a solution to do such things that I thought when I was 12. What challenges did you face doing a 3D printed construction project that changed from the way you did things before? I worked on a project for two years as an architect and uh, I, my mind always and my teachers always told me you have to design on a two-dimensional way. You have to make a plan. You have to, to design when I was young with a little, little, little pen and afterwards with a computer. But we always made plans on two dimensions. And now we have the printer and now we have the possibilities of printing and, and I, my son is also a little printer and we, we, we see that you can uh, design uh, things on, on three dimensions. It's a completely other way of thinking than they teach us, than I've learned in, in uh, architectural companies. Uh, so you have to think on, on, on the third dimension, that's the possibility, that's the, the great step they made with these printing systems. 
What other considerations should architects designing 3D printable models take into consideration? They have to think in another way. Now we think in, in the way of two dimensions and the walls are vertical with, with, with these new types uh, of construction techniques. Uh, you can make curved walls, you can make compactor volumes. Uh, so it's, it's, it's like thinking on, on uh, industrial engineering. You, you don't think you have to make a house, but you have to think on, on a third dimension. Um, the complexity is completely different than, than making two-dimensional plans. How much room for innovation is there in electrical and plumbing systems for 3D printed houses? An architect will design things. It's an industrial engineer who made the printers. Huh? That's, that's completely different. Mm -hmm. huh? You have a machine like a pump, like like a printer. That's not for for an architect to to think how it's how it's constructed, how it's think. We have to design uh, buildings, and we have the, the technique of printing. Mm -hmm. So there are two different things. I think. <laughs> but you you have to know the process of printing. Uh, before you uh, can design buildings with a printer. So you have to follow the, the new technique, the new way um, of thinking and you have to see how it works with a printer and at that moment you can, you can design other things. So I've bought myself a little printer, a very cheap one. Um, it was 300 euros, uh, so all the same in dollars, I think. Uh, and that was for me the moment that I can experiment on Sunday, on Saturday. I can design little things, little object, objects. And, and it's the same principle of printing with the printer of Cobot or, or a greater uh, printer. You can, you can do it from a very simple um, tablet, a very simple computer with, with a very simple little printer. Uh, you can design things and you can the same files sent to a great printer of Cobot. <laughs>